Hello and welcome everyone to another episode of the Game Day Squad Aussie Rules Show Round 5 Edition. I'm Cal and joining me today is Kerm. Kerm, how are you? I'm good, mate. I'm good. I know you're a little bit better than me this morning. Port Adelaide obviously got a big, big win on the weekend. You got the colours on. But yeah, no Tom today. It's just you and me. A, a, a sickness curse has entered into the podcast team here and we're without him. Yeah, funny that. My Port Adelaide power beat his Sydney Swans and he still hasn't replied to my message from Saturday night. So we don't know where he is. Whoa. He's done a runner. Maybe he's still celebrating the goal. Maybe someone should tell him that Ali earlier sported it on the line. But yeah, no. <laughs> I, don't worry. I'll make sure we get him on, hopefully on the live stream on Thursday, and I'll make him answer um, for, his, um, for his Swans performance. But Kerm, we're going to kick things off this week, as we always do, with Pack of the Week. I believe we've got it up on screen now. Talk us through who's won and why. A very tasty Pack of the Week this week, and it's from Discord. It's the Mighty Hoss, and the criteria for the week was old heads. We last previously, in the last Pack of the Week, we wanted your best Dynasty Pack. This week we said we, we want your best old heads. We want to see some guys that have been around the park a little bit, and... To be honest, the Discord sort of let us down a little bit, but this pack is insane nonetheless. It looks like a nine-player common pack. It's got a gold Josh Dunkley, a silver Tim Taranto, and a silver Sam Doherty, if you don't mind. And obviously, your man Darcy Byrne-Jones there in the Platinum. So, an insane pack for this week. I want to see some more old heads, so get down in the Discord. If you open up a pack and there's some old heads in there, Please submit it. That is our criteria again for this week. I'm not going to give like up it. until we see it. Old heads on the Discord, submit them in there. I like it. We always get the terrible packs when people don't actually want them. But there are prizes on offer here. So we're <laughs> going to be reaching out to you, Mighty Hoss, on Discord. We're going to be reaching out to you with your packs. It's that simple. Open a pack, submit it if you get some old players. And even if you miss a week and you don't know what the criteria is, just submit it anyway because you never know. You might still win the pack. But, Kerm, let's talk about Game Day Squad. That's why we're here. You're a little bit sadder this week, uh, not because your son's lost, um, but because your fantasy team didn't take out the competition this week. So talk me through it. How did the Kermies go in round four? Poor, mate. Uh, actually, quite poor. Um, we finished 19th overall on the week, which is enough to hold on to the number one position on this season, thankfully. Um, but 19th is not where I want this squad to be sitting. So we're going to look to bounce back in a big, big way next week. Um, there were some key performances that really stood out. Obviously, Clayton Oliver is just about the best player in the competition. I know we're going to be talking about him a little bit later on in the week, uh, in the show, but Clayton Oliver is just an absolute must-start, no matter what card you have um, of Clayton Oliver's. He needs to be in your team. Tim Taranto as well. He's just about as good a set of get in the forward line as you can possibly get. Josh Dunkley, Stephen Canelio aren't hitting as a lot of the community thought they were going to, um, so it's nice to have that solidity in Tim Taranto up forward to, to shore things up. Um, in that forward line but no for me we're going to look to bounce back in a big way a lot of changes are going to be made Um, maybe some MRP uh, decisions to to sway me Um, in some directions with Will Day maybe being a little in a little bit of trouble Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah look look for some changes on the live show um, after a disappointing round four for myself but what about yourself mate? So I thought I actually had a good week I scored 2,220 points but that only got me 53rd, which I was a little bit shocked about. It's the the capped competition is getting very, very competitive because that's 300 points more than I got last week. And I think my ranking went backwards, so go figure. I did, however, move up the seasonal rank, so the people above me are all new. So 26th overall. Overall, yeah, I wasn't too upset. There was only really one player that I'm sort of I'm going to touch on in the hot seat in a second. Everyone else kind of did as expected. Um, would have liked a couple more goals from Dylan Moore, but overall, I was pretty happy. It's not like I'm sitting here and want to throw someone out of my team straight away. So, just you know, I thought I had a good week, but obviously, people around me have had a better week. Now, we don't know how Tom's gone. He has been sick. Um, he hasn't told me that. He's still avoiding me, but he has told you that, Kerm. So, we're going to have to figure out to see how he goes later on. But I'll tell you straight away. I'll jump into the hot seat segment yep. this week, and that player that I've actually got there is Hayden Young. So Hayden Young, 
He's he was coming into the year. Everyone thought he would be a top six defender, and he's pushed out in round one. He had a massive score of 130, but then since then he's gone 63, 95, 88, which isn't terrible. But considering how competitive things are at the moment, you need to at least be tunning up every week. So his average score of 95 just isn't cutting it for me. Needs to be doing better now. I don't know who I'd be looking to bring in as a replacement. I don't have anyone else available, so I'm going to have to stick with him for now. But if I do land myself a free agent, potentially he could be the one that gets the axe. So I've put the warning out to him earlier in the week. He's going to have to big week have a big week training. But yeah, let's see if he's in the team come Thursday night. I actually really like that hot seat because I'm in a bit of the same boat. I've got a diamond um, Hayden Young that I was really excited about in the off season and was really keen to play him, but. As you say, with that with that average of 95 and not cracking the ton, it's borderline impossible to start him considering how competitive the defenders are at the moment. So it is a little bit of a shame. He's got all the attributes to be a good fantasy asset going forward. We just need to see more from him and a little bit more consistency as well. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Who have you got on the hot seat this week? This is just about as hot as it gets, and it's Lockie Neal. Um, and I absolutely blew him up in the live show. I thought there's no chance this guy scores less than 120 odd GDS fantasy points. He had six, it was 15 out of 16 games. But is he your lock of the week? Have you gone <laughs> early there? I can't remember. He wasn't was my he lock, lock of the week. week. We'll get into that a little bit later on. But I, I thought it was an absolute must start. Playing at the Gabba, he had 15 out of 16 games, recent games. Over 25 disposals. Now, he hit that again. It was just a shame that 16 of his disposal count were handballs. And his kick-to-handball ratio this year has been absolutely diabolical for fantasy coaches all around the country. And for me, because of that, I don't think I'm going to be able to start him going forward. He has a handy average of 100.7 going into round five. But for Lockie Neal... You really want to be pushing that 120, 125 as a premium midfield option. And the Brisbane Lions as a whole look a little bit shaky because Josh Dunkley himself, absolute fantasy stud, number one off the board in a lot of draft leagues, but just is not meeting those standards so far this season. So it goes to, to show that when you add players like a Josh Dunkley, Will Ashcroft into a midfield that has, you know, Lockie Neal, Jared Berry, Hugh McCluggage, the points are going to be going somewhere, and unfortunately, it's not going to a couple of blokes. It's going to all of them, and they're all underperforming at the moment. So, yeah, Lockie Neal is on my hot seat, and I can almost guarantee he'll be the first player out of my squad going into round five, unfortunately. There you go. You've got to put him on the hot seat and then yeah. axe him at the end of the week. You know it's coming. What a, what a rough <laughs> week for, for Lockie Neal, but I tell you what, I'm sure he's pretty happy with the way the Lions touched up the pies last Indeed. Thursday night. Yeah, seems like yeah, seems like forever ago now. We're recording this on the Tuesday, just with the the Essendon, not the Essendon, the Geelong game on the Monday. But Kerm, you're going to take the place of Tom this week, and you're going to hit me with a buy, sell, hold. Who have you got loaded yeah, up? Yeah, so me? you can see it on your screen now. And going into Magic Round, I've actually attacked a positional group here, and I've gone the three-headed dragon of the Ruckman, and you got the choice of Tim English, Brody Grundy, and Rowan Marshall this week. You can only start one, you can hold the other, and then sell the last one. Who are you going for between the three Ruckman who are the most in form at the position at the moment? Is this only, only for this week? week? Or you could put it only for this week? Because I was going to say it would be very easy if it wasn't. <laughs> but I, uh, the easy answer is... Tim English is starting in every one's team, and he should be. He's the best ruck in the comp at the moment. He's absolutely finding the football, and yeah, running a muck. Oh, between them, between this week, I think I'm gonna go yeah. Ron Marshall. I'm just gonna stick with him. Um, I still think un- until I see Grundy get back to pig form, I'm gonna just stick with um, with Marshall. I think Grundy has the potential to get there within the next couple of weeks, but yeah, it's a bit of a safer bet. But that's who I'd go with. Um, who would you go with if you had, if I had to make you choose between those three? I was actually going to start Rowan Marshall only because of the matchup. He comes up against Collingwood, um, who actually don't have a Ruckman at all outside of Dan Nick's day at the moment. So I was going to start Rowan Marshall. I think I'll stick there um, despite you going with Tim English. Um, and with the Port Adelaide matchup against the Bulldogs, I'll hold Tim English. 
And that that's the smartest way to go about it, I think, as well. He's clearly the most informed fantasy ruckman in the league at the moment and should be starting in about 95% of teams at the moment, no matter what card rarity you hold of Tim English, which means, unfortunately, I have to sell Brody Grundy, who has been in incredible form um, with Max Gorn out. But despite that, Rowan Marshall against Collingwood, that is in like one of the tastiest matchups at the position at the moment. Tim English is too informed to leave out, so that means Brody Grundy will be sold, unfortunately, for myself. Yeah, I love what you said about the Port matchup against English because I thought Laddams had his way with Scotty Lysette and I thought Lysette was almost worst, yeah. worst on um, for us. So, yeah, very very interested to see what Ken does there. I don't imagine he'd drop him um, after that win, but, yeah, that, there's 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 couple, definitely a couple of good matchups because we all thought the big O would go big yeah. um, against Collingwood the other night. And he went well, but didn't go the 130 that the community were hoping for in lock of the week, but we'll touch on that nervous. a little bit later. <laughs> Kim, I'll throw straight... I was a little bit nervous when Big O was killing Sorry? it halfway through the, the third quarter. I thought, geez, we might be on here, but yeah, we'll touch on that score a little bit later on. Yeah, def- definitely. Question of the round, Kim, what have you got looking ahead for round five? It's crazy to think oh. we're already a month into footy, but hit us up. What's your question of the round for the week? So the big news for me is surrounding Carlton and their midfield group, their engine room. Um, they've obviously had Sammy Walsh out for the first five rounds, and he is now available for selection going into round five. So mm. I'm really interested to see how that engine room shakes up. Obviously, Cripps, Cripps is doing Cripps things. He's killing it. Um, but the, there seems to be a little bit of a discrepancy between Cripps and the rest of the engine room. You know, Aaron Chera's chipped in. At times, George Hewitt's chipped in, Matt Kennedy's chipped in when he's been available for selection. But I can't see how Sam Walsh doesn't just slot straight back into that number one, two role um, in the engine room of the Carlton Blues. So for me, I'm, my eyes are going to be all over him. I almost want to select him as a you know a one one for one swap with with Neil straight up. I just want to see how he goes in this first round, just to see the run in his legs, see if he needs any more time to to work his way into form. But we all know how good Sam Walsh is. He's one of the best dynasty selections league-wide. He is so, so, so good and one of the best ball extractors in the league. So I'm really excited to see how he goes, whether he does need that time. But I'm sure, considering the players they have in the midfield at the moment, Vossi just sticks him in and says, go your hardest, mate. Yeah, there's no doubt about it. He's coming straight into that team because he is an absolute weapon. I don't know if I'd be trusting him though first yeah, game back. Question. Never know. But I tell you what, if there's someone that looks after himself, it's probably this guy. And against an Adelaide midfield, which isn't the best, they're playing really well at the they moment. They do have their um, tails up. They're all sort of chipping yeah. in. But yeah, they do. They do. I think that'll be a very tasty game. A real, um, a real, a real barometer game for, for both teams who are coming in a bit of form. But no, I like that one. But I love you talking about Dynasty because that is my question of the round. And... I've spoken about him a little bit, um, mainly because I traded him away in my team for Jordan Dawson, and I have regretted oh, that trade I know who within this is. Well, since three hours of it happening. Um, yeah, but I want to know: at only twenty-five years old, is Clayton Oliver the best dynasty player in the entire AFL? He's absolutely killing it at the moment. He's probably going to be killing it at the Demons for the next five years. Would you take him? Is he is he a shout for number one, or are you still going to go with someone like a Nick Dacos or a Brayshaw? It's hard to... Because he's got you thinking now. Because he, he wasn't in the discussion at the start of the year. It was very much those younger guys. But we f- often forget just how good how young this guy is because he's been so good for and so long already. Thing. 25 is such a, a no-man's land age um, when it comes to thinking about Dynasty. You often... You often go towards, you know, your Andy Brayshaws, 23, 22, 21 years, year olds that have shown so much talent and scoring ability. But Clayton Oliver now, he signed a seven-year contract over the off-season with the Melbourne Demons to stay there. And there is genuinely no reason to believe that his role is going to change and that he's not going to be dominant for those next seven years consecutively. So for me... Considering the way he's playing, I think he does edge out Nick Dacos and, and Andy Brayshaw. You know, Bailey Smith's been absolutely bevoed. By the way, yeah. I have a bone to pick with Bevo because he is absolutely decimating, you know, the likes of Jack McRae, Bailey Smith, 
coming into the season, Bailey Smith was regarded as a top three dynasty option. And at the moment, he's not on anybody's map. So Bevo needs to sort his team out. Um, but that's, that's for another no. segment. Um, but for me, at 25 years of age, the way he's scoring, um, Clayton Oliver, for me, is the best dynasty option in the league right now. There you go. Let us know what you think of that one below. Kerm, let's just quickly look back to last week before we look forward to lock yep. of the round for this week. How did you go with your pick? I believe you picked Grundy I and you did. hit that against the depleted West Coast um, team. Well done, 120 points. Must be pretty happy yeah, with that. Yeah, to get on the board again. And then, yeah, yeah, definitely after you and Tom shaky start for both of you but you've gone with Sam Doherty this week for 127 points talk us through that one we just said they were playing the Crows yeah so the Crows are a bit of a sketchy matchup and Doherty himself has been sketchy as well he's coming off a down round only scored 85 points in round four but he's playing this weird high back flanker almost rover roll it, it's not working out for him at the moment and it's it's coming through in his scoring as well. He's had two scores over 100, like easily over 100, but then two scores below 100 as well. So we, we don't usually see this from Sam Doherty. He's usually one of the most consistent scorers in the league, especially amongst defenders. He came into the season just about the best defender, um, number one defender ranked by a country mile. He was MVP in the competition last he year. Was. Remember, he won yeah most points in the whole league. He's an absolutely insane so. fantasy asset, but with this role that he's playing, it is it's not proving fruitful at all. So hopefully, with Sam Walsh coming back in and maybe Matt Kennedy as well, he can push back into that defensive fifty again, play that high intercept marking role, get those kick marks back up, and we'll see vintage Sam Doherty back on the park again. So I'm. I'm banking on a on a on a bounce back for Doherty and going 127 to hopefully claw back some points on you who is leading. Yeah, a bit more aggressive than my 105 for Doc <laughs> in week one. I hit Clayton Oliver on the weekend. Um, I'm all aboard yep. the Clayton Oliver train, as you can tell at the moment. 125 did it easy. This week, I'm going to Sydney for Tom Green over at the Giants to get 115 points. He's in some good form at the moment, and I want to ride the hot hand. It's been working for me so far. Just liking the way that he's going about his footy. Um, and, I, yeah, I, I just think 115 is going to be quite easy for him. So he's going to be my pick. We can hear Tom's Thursday night on the live show, so make sure you're following that. It's going to be posted on all of our socials. But there you can see on top, um, it says I'm three from four. But remember that one was oh, LDU God. a late scratching, so that asterisk there beside it tells you that I'm actually three for three. So yeah, very happy with my lead at the moment, and I've got a good little buffer on everyone, including the community who who's got off to a hot start but have dropped off. So you've got to stay tuned for Thursday night to see who we've got coming in for that show, the live show. So that'll probably wrap us up here, Kerm. We I've got through it without Tom. Um, hopefully you guys agree. It was probably a lot nicer, a lot, uh, lot friendlier with, without him here. Um, definitely, definitely won't be on Thursday when he's on that live stream. But Thursday, the start of Gather Round. Can't wait for that. Are you excited? So excited. So keep everybody in the Gets Adelaide. It's going to be such a good round. The inaugural Magic Round. So, so excited for it. Yeah, absolutely. I can't wait to see. I'm a bit nervous about Port against the Dogs, but we will see how we go. Thank you so much for following along so far and supporting everything we're doing here at Game Day Squad. Remember, all the links for everything are below, so make sure you are checking them out. If you're not on our Discord already, make sure you go and join it. There's a lot happening over there. Competitions, trade chat, everything you need to know about Game Day Squad is happening there, so make sure you go and join that. Kerm, it's been a pleasure. And we'll be back on Thursday for our next episode of the live show. Thanks, everyone. 